Hi, this is Bella Mehta from New York reporting at ACR 2022. Um, and I have with me Kai Sun, uh, who's coming from Duke University in Durham, uh, North Carolina. And uh, we're talking about abstract number 0063, implementation of uh, SLE medication adherence intervention. Uh, with that, uh, Kai, uh, what uh, kind of work did you do? And can you tell us more about the abstract? Sure, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we all know that medication adherence is a big issue in patients with lupus, and it's often frustrating for clinicians to deal with that in uh, regular visits. And it's sometimes we underestimate how much patients are being non adherent, and patients don't like to bring up non adherence issues. So, to make that conversation a little bit more efficient and easier and uh, happen more routinely, we developed this intervention uh, where we teach clinicians to use pharmacy refill data in the clinic visit and use effective communication strategies with the patient to talk about that. Uh, and previously published that this intervention was feasible, acceptable, and there was a signal in increasing adherence. And in this study, we wanted to better understand exactly what happens during the intervention. So we made audio recordings of clinic encounters with patients who were non-adherent to their medications. And then we interview the patients after the visit to get their uh, take on their experiences uh, with the intervention. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it is, uh, for lupus patients, it's been a huge problem with adherence and we've talked, uh, we've. Uh, listen to a lot of conversations about this, this ACR. So this seems like a good, uh, good way, a uh, good start to solving this problem. Um, how many patients did you have and how easy was it to deploy this intervention? We auto recorded a total of 25 visits with six different rheumatologists. Uh, so about four to five patients were rheumatologists. It was, uh, in the audio recordings, the conversation, these were all with non-adherent patients. So with adherent patients, it would be much simpler easier, yeah. uh, and take much less time. But with non-adherent patients, on average, it took 3.8 minutes to have this conversation. Um, and uh, the providers uh, did the intervention as we taught them 88% of the time. So the fidelity was great um, and they used the uh, communication strategies. Um, and so it was easy uh, and it didn't take a lot of time. So I think there is a lot of promise with the intervention. That's great. How much time did it take you to uh, teach the providers this? Like, for, like, do the providers have like two days worth of courses to do or how, how long does it take to teach them? Yeah, we developed the intervention uh, with the providers and with patients initially. So uh, when we developed the intervention, we involved the providers in a few uh, focus groups. Um, and after that, it's actually, uh, it only, it actually doesn't take very much time to, to do. What's the number? Uh, Ten minutes. Essential, like the I can distill it down to ten minutes, or I could expand. Like if, if okay. providers wanted to learn more about the specific you know, computing strategies, I could expand it to you know an hour or two okay. hours. But, okay. uh, I mean, I guess in this day and age, anything that can be shortened for providers who have a lot of burden uh, to do this, um, that would be. Amazing. So, and how about sustainability? How long do these interventions last? Like, uh, after uh, six months of doing this training, uh, does it still last? That's also a great question. Uh, we initially did our initial study uh, in 2019, prior to the COVID pandemic, and then we did this study uh, this past year. So, our clinicians are still using the intervention of this clinic and they found that uh, it's easy to use. So um, we okay. haven't a, a, a studied it officially. officially. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Great, great. So um, one last question. Um, can this be implemented like in different universities? Uh, is it EPIC based uh, or is it uh, just be, only some EMRs can do it. 
<laughs> Another great question. We use Epic and the pharmacy refill data that's pulled in um, is available, should be available in all Epic systems, but the, the data, the, the company also on their website at least, they work with virtually all EMRs, so it should also be available in other EMRs systems. Um, so I'm assuming there's a cost involved to do it? If uh, we want to disseminate it to like 10 universities? There is actually no cost, it's already, the data is it's already bought into Epic, so that's another uh, good thing about this intervention that it doesn't involve additional cost to the clinic. Great. Uh, I think this is a great study given that um, adherence is a huge, huge problem in our lupus patients. Um, so uh, there's hope and uh, with that, uh, signing off here, um, this is Bella Mehta at Room Now, reporting from ACR. Uh, and for, for more of these, uh, follow me at Bella underscore Mehta at Twitter. Thank you.